Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video tutorial for spatial data set analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform spatial data deconvolution using the robust cell type decomposition package. Because throughout, we have support this package to deconvolve support level data from spatial data sets. If you run RCTD, we need a spatial data set as a query data, and also we need a single cell RNA sequencing data set as a reference. To run RCD in R, you need to install the package space XR. If you haven't installed this package, you can use the code here to install the package. I installed the package already, so we can know that the package is SURAT, space XR, we need a tidy verse, and also we can set the state in order to repeat the analysis. So I'm going to use the VZMHD data for demonstration again. I have a video before to show you how to analyze the VZMHD data in details. You can watch another video. Here I'm going to quickly go through the data analysis. In that video, I showed you how to analyze the bin size 8 data because Surat recommends use the bin size 8 to analyze the VGMHD data. So let's load the data and name the object as Cortex. Okay, you can see we loaded the spatial data set. We can click the data and have a look. You can see here we have 19,059 genes. Here we have nearly 400,000 cells. So we are going to normalize the data. Then find the variable features. We also scale the data. You can use the standard workflow to analyze the cells, but Surat's V5 recommends you use the sketched method to analyze the VZMHD data. So we are going to use the sketch method to take 50,000 cells and cluster the, the cells first, so we can sketch 50,000 cells from the data set. Okay, if we have a look at the cortex object, you can see now we have two assays, spatial 008 micrometers assay and also the sketch assay. You can see in the sketch assay we have 50,000 cells and the same amount of genes as the original spatial assay. So now we can set the default assay as sketch. Then, analyze the sketch to see we can find the variable features, scale the data. Now we can run PCA for the sketch to see. We give a reduction name as PCA Cortex Sketch. If you don't give a name here, it will be just a PCA. So after PC, we can find the neighbors and also find the clusters. So now we can run UMAP. After you map, we can have a look at the cell clusters using the DIM plot. You can see we have 24 cell clusters here for the sketch to see. We are going to perform deconvolution on the sketch it analyze the object. After that, we can project the sketch the data into full data set. So now we can use the sketch to see as the query data set to run RCTD. So first we can create the RCD query object 
use the spatial RNA function from the SpaceX R package, hook the RCD query data from spatial data. First, we need to get the counts from the sketched C. We name it as counts HD. The next, we can get the cell names from the spatial data. We know the cell names are in the column names in the sketched data set. We can get it. And for the spatial data set, we also need to get the coordinators. In the coordinators, we have the cell position x and y for each cell from the spatial data set. If we have a look at the coordinators, you can see the row names are the cells. Then we have the x and the y position for each cell. So now we can use the spatial RNA function to create a query data for the spatial data set. We already got the coordinators, the counts, and the cell names. We can just run spatial RNA to create a RCD query data. You can see it is very quick for the sketched C. We can connect the data and have a look. You can see here in the query data set created by the spatial RNA function from the space. XR package, we have the coordinators, counts, and the total cell numbers. So we got the query data set already. Next, we need a reference data set. You can use any analyzed single cell RNA sequencing data. We are going to use the reference data set for the mouse brain from Allen Brain Atlas. If you want to use this data set as a reference for practice, you can download the data from Allen Brain Atlas website. There's the link on the online tutorial for Surat V5 VGMHD data analysis. I downloaded the data already. We can just read it into R. You can see we noted the reference data. We can get the DGC matrix from the count as a count. Next, we can get the cell types from the reference data. We can have a look at the metadata first. Okay, you can see here are the metadata for the reference data set. We want to see the cell type names. You can see here we have the cluster label and also sub cluster label. We are going to use the sub cluster label for the cell types. So we can get the cluster name from the sub cluster label from the metadata. And we can replace the slash as a hyphen for the cluster name. Now we can get the total count for the genes in each cell. You can see we got the counts, cluster names, and also the total count for all the genes in each cell. Now we can use the reference function from the space XR to create a RCTD reference object. So now we have the both query and the reference RCD object. We can create a RCD object to run RCD. So the max cost argument in the create RCD function is for parallel processing the data. It will depend on your computer or if you are using the high performance computer. So the maximum core for my computer is 8, so I'm going to set 8 here. Let's create the RCD object. You can see the computer starts to process the cell type information. At the moment, it is processing the cell type information and also the number of genes in the reference data set.
Okay, you can see we created a RCTD object using the reference data set to perform spatial data set deconvolution. So now we can just run RCD to perform deconvolution. You can set the double knit model as double knit multi or full model. For double knit model, usually the image contains one or two cells per pixel. Multi model contains three to four cells. And there's no restriction for how many cells in each pixel for the full model. So here we use the double knit model to run RCTD. Okay, you can see uh, it is running. I ran the analysis before. It will take more than three hours to run this step. I can keep the computer running for today. Then I will show you the result in my next video tutorial. I'm going to stop from here today. I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.